Hmm. Welcome back, Foulmouth Fishing. Um, I threw this video together because uh, it's a topic I really wanted to talk about. Um, something that I don't fish commonly, but I know a lot of tricks and techniques and things that actually have fallen into uh, historical mothballs, for lack of a better term. Um, but this is about tubes, tube fishing. Um, I, I admit, I don't fish tubes as much as I'd like to. Um, they always catch fish. They are a fish catching machine. Um, but there's a lot of things that people do wrong, do right, and just don't do anymore that I learned when I was younger from other fishermen. So, uh, rigging tubes, there's uh, certain things I'm going to show you. Uh, baiting tubes, scenting tubes, and making tubes, packing them with, uh, with different things, be it a liquid scent like, uh, like this Berkeley, uh, dips, dipping scents, uh, pastes, as well as gels, um, like these little cooler gels. There's ways you can actually bait your tube with these um, things, and even including things like, uh, you know, Berkeley's Power Bait, the little styrofoam eggs, or, uh, you know, I've got these, these salmon eggs that can fit in there. Um, be it a real, uh, a real bait or real scent or even or these chemical uh, pastes and powders and and gels you can scent up your bait and make it so that that scent lasts a lot longer than just coating it with a little bit of paste and rubbing the frills and then casting out there and watching that scent wash away and one of those tricks involves these little things here so these are just simple foam earplugs but uh, we'll get to that in a second um, first and foremost, uh, I want to talk about setting up and hooking your, your tube. Um, there's a couple ways to do it. Uh, I tend to use a worm hook. Uh, I like to use offset worm hooks when I do my tubes. Um, I'll do anything from a, a 2 aught like this owner or the Gamakatsu. Uh, I rarely go up above like a 5 aught uh, offset worm hook. Um, it just, uh, you, there are bigger tubes that can, you know, do a 6 or an 8 aught or, or a larger hook, but even even with a larger tube, I rarely ever go over a five, um, just because of I don't know it's just convenience to me, uh, especially because also you're you're dealing with a, a much higher wire gauge and it becomes a pain in the butt going through the plastic that you tear up or tear out a lot. So I try to stick with uh, you know with a five aught, two aught, three aught, and 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 that's about it. <clears throat> it doesn't really matter to me whether it's an offset um, bent shank or like these two aughts here that are. A straight shank hook or the bent shank doesn't really matter to me either or works um, sometimes a little this gives you a little bit more uh, flexibility in how you rig it but it's all the same um, the main thing that you want to know when you're rigging a tube is uh, not to bury the eye in the plastic okay uh, a lot of people they'll, they'll rig their tubes they'll run their hook through the top come out about a quarter of an inch, spin their tube to Texas rig it, and then they'll drop, you know, with their line still connected to the to the hook, they'll drop the hook eye into the bait, and then they'll Texas rig it and Texpose it. Okay? And what ends up happening with that hook eye buried where it's no longer visible, when the fish bites on this, he'll pull this bait off and now there's nothing holding there's no locking mechanism which the hooks have these little offset locks locking heads but there's nothing there to catch the plastic because this is now inside completely the plastic uh, bait and what ends up happening is this this uh, tube will bunge up on the bottom of the hook it'll fill up this space it'll pressure the hook out of the fish's mouth and then you've lost your your your, your cast or your catch so one of the most important fundamental things to remember is whichever way you're trying to hook this bait, except for one or two special ways that I hook it once in a while, but rarely, um, is when you're hooking it, you want to make sure that you leave that hook eye exposed. So just pop it to that hook keeper and then, you know, do your, your rigging. And then there you go. So you've got your hook eye exposed right there. You've got your shank and your little text post hook and I just poked myself in the mirror. <laughs> so uh, so that's most important is keep that hook eye exposed. Secondly, um, ways that I rig my tubes. 
All right, so typically, you know, the Texas rig, like I just showed you, easy wheezy way to do it. Um, I also rig it sort of a chicken rig way. Um, I'll show you with this one. I use the smaller straight shank hook. But basically what I do is I come in from the top of the, of the tube on the frill side. If you run your frills and lay them out flat, you'll find when they mold these, there is an, a direction in which the frills will go left and right. And you'll have this like part, like parting your hair down the middle. So I find that natural part from the molding process and I'll run my hook frill side down and out and then I'll rotate it and then I'll stick it back in and do it backwards. All right. So now you have a bait where the line is coming out the, the frill side of the bait. And when you fish this, um, the key to the key to tubes and and why they are so good on reaction strikes is when they fall they fall with this natural sort of twisting tornado death spiral so they very well mimic a dying uh, bait fish uh, falling from you know surface down through the water column to the bottom where they'd fall and die or, or fall and rest so as they're sick and dying they're kind of spinning down and twisting down and falling with this way of of rigging it what you're going to end up having is, uh, I normally fish this on a, on a spinning reel, a lightweight spinning, uh, spinning reel. And uh, you're going to be able to twitch this back, and it'll fall, pendulum, back away from you. So if I'm trying to flip underneath tree branches, underneath cover, into docks, or if I'm trying to skip this under a dock, this is the way I'll rig it. Uh, attention, uh, occasionally what I can do also is I can throw a small little sinker into the nose. I'll show you that real quick. I don't mind tearing this up, but uh, what I'll do is I'll take this weight, I will stick it down, wet it, stick it down into the tube, work it all the way down, and then pinch it. And then I'll take that hook, find my part in the bait, throw my hook through, rotate it, and then I will find the hook eye for that sinker. Take some doing, careful don't jab your, don't jab your thumb, and I'll run, run the hook point through that uh, hook eye for the sinker, and then pop my, my hook back out. And now what happens is that sinker can't go anywhere, it's not going to come out, it's, it's held inside the bait, so it's not going to come up through and, and, and you're not going to lose your sinker. It puts nose weight on the bait. So now again, you're swimming, this comes down, you're jerking it, comes down. So you can work it and it'll pendulum down deeper into cover. So it'll give you that extra couple of inches, couple of, you know, of uh, extra inches that you might want to put it in the fish's face. Also, when you're pulling, it's not pulling up to you and going away, pendulum them away back towards the boat or back towards the towards the uh, shore. You're able to throw it in, flip it in underneath the dock, throw it in where the fish haven't seen it, pull it back, and it'll drop right back in front of that fish. So maybe he didn't react on the first strike, but he'll he might come back on that second on that second sight of that uh, of that bait. So that's another way. That's that reverse sort of chicken rig style. Of, uh, of rigging the uh, of rigging the bait um, so that's the other way I do it so I showed that with that little bait uh, another way is um, to kind of Nico rig it in a way and that is rig it standard Texas style but I drive a little nail weight into a little nail weight sinker into the head of the bait similar to that but again I'm, I'm rigging this normal Texas style with the hook facing up, not facing reversed with the thrills. So now you're, you're whipping that out there. Again, the nail's still going to drive it back, but this way, when you, when you pull it back, it's going to pendulum and twist a little bit better and come back towards you. So when you do the chicken rig style, it's going to swim away each time you draw it up and then let release and let slack. It'll, it'll start swimming back away. This one, you'll draw it up towards you. It'll swim towards you. Draw it up towards you, swim towards you. So that's a good way uh, to rig that.
It's just a matter of your standard Texas rig style, but you're just going to drive a nail weight, a lightweight nail weight into the head of the plastic. That works very good on larger um, tubes that have a more sturdy, stout, thicker head. Uh, some tubes are more hollow right up to the tip. Um, the nail weight one works a little bit better when you have that quarter inch or so of thick plastic uh, on, on, on those style of tubes. And then finally, uh, the other way is to basically just punch a straight shank hook, uh, is normally what I use for this specifically. But if I have a, a nice straight shank hook, what I'll do is I'll take, I'll take the tube and I'll just straight up wiggle that in and just pop it through the head of the, of the tube. Now oh, this one's not going to work because it's not the right, or not the right length shank, so I'd use a, a larger hook. But I'll pop that through the head with a larger hook um, that'll come down and clear this, and then I just fish it that way. Um, and that, that tends to work out very well, like I did with this one here. So the hook comes out, and you can see, the, I'll keep going to the light, and you can see the, uh, the exposed hook eye. Um, also with this technique, you can bait this rig, you can do that with any of them actually, um, and that's more the point of, of this video. So, a lot of times people will take their, their liquid baits or their paste baits and, uh, you know, they'll, they'll take something like this. Like if I have a clear or a white tube, I'll use this, uh, this is Shad Scale uh, by Johnson. It's Crappie Blast Buster. It's uh, just a paste gel. And this one's all black. I also have a rainbow and some orange, depending on what color tubes I'm using. So I can, you can see a little bit of it through the tube. Um, but they'll just... Stick the nozzle in, squirt a little bit in there, rig it up, flip it out. The problem with that is the water in there, it's, it's washing it out. So you make a couple of casts and all your attractant is gone. Uh, it's even more so problematic with things like this, uh, you know, this bass attractant power, uh, power bait by Berkeley. Um, it's just a liquid, just a pour in liquid attractant. So you just open up the cap, squirt it in, you know, massage it around the plastic a little bit, flip and, and it washes off quickly. What I've learned from my granddad a long time ago was uh, taking a styrofoam foam rubber ear protection. Just your standard cheap CVS dollar store, you know, a Walgreens at whatever your, your local, uh, you know, um, health store would be. And just get the, the small hearing protection earplugs. Now, this this company that I use, um, I'm not really affiliated, I don't market them or anything, but um, this company color codes their uh, their earplugs. So, based on decibels. So, these, these green ones, which are pretty flat-sided, they are a 32 decibel reduction. So, 0 to 32 decibels, they will, they will help. These pinker ones, which are more bell-shaped, they have a bit of a curve on the outside compared to the green or neon, that has this more straight side, these go up to about 30 decibels. So 32 on this green, 30 on the pink. Now this doesn't equate across all brands. Um, obviously some just do it for appearance sake. You might have zebra striped ones or bright orange and bright yellow and, uh, and that kind of stuff. But this company tends to color code theirs based on the decibel reading that this is uh, designed to, to help. Um, substitute for that is a simple cotton ball. That's another way to do it. But basically, with the styrofoam uh, or the the foam rubber, um, this brand, uh, actually it's Max brand, has a hole cut into the end. You can see there, and it's it's kind of like a like a Phillips head screwdriver, but it's got this cavity down the middle. So I like to use these particularly with the paste and gel style because I can put the nozzle into this little cavity, squirt my gel down into the middle. I can then twist this up small. It'll impregnate that styrofoam. And then take, I use, uh, you know, I always use a little forceps just because it's convenient and it keeps everything kind of nice and, and easy to handle. And then work it down the core of the tube like that. And just massage it down. So now, um, after a little bit, this foam will then expand, 
filling the cavity. But now what you have is you have this little cup with your bait that's protected. It doesn't wash out nearly as quickly. Uh, the foam's impregnated with the scent. This also works really, really well with things like, um, you know, spike its dips, because you can dip it in there, let it sit, soak up a lot of the, the dip and glow. Um, gets that garlic scent really nicely into the, into the uh, foam rubber. Wring it out a little bit. It's wet, so it, it, it goes down to the tubes a lot easier. Um, and then you can simply have this impregnated foam rubber inside your bait. That gives off a lot of scent, holds that scent for far longer, for far more casts, and it also gives you a point that adds body to the tube, as you can see here, that allows you to actually poke your, your hook in through that foam rubber. So, it gives you an added benefit of, of adding a little bit of rigidity. You can see here is the smaller one. You can see that from this point to about yay is that foam rubber earplug. So it's soft here and hollow. There's that foam earplug right here, and then you're back to the hollow body of the of the uh, the tube. I'll give you a shot down there. I don't know how well this is going to come up because. It's a tiny tube, but down in there, in the recesses, you might be able to make out that neon, is the earplug. So, you soak the earplug in a little bit, you wring it down to a small point, you slide it in, you know, wet, it's, it's wet from the scent. You can use, use a little bit of water on your fingers, wet the inside of the tube, and then slide it in, and then you can rig your, uh, your hook, same way Texas rig. Uh, with this also, you can... Make sure you go through the head, come out just above the um, the earplug, and then rig the hook back underneath the earplug to come out the other side. That also keeps retains that earplug inside the body of the tube. Uh, same thing can be done with, like I said, a little piece of cotton ball. Typically what I do is I take the cotton ball, I cut about a quarter of an inch ring, like so. Doesn't take a whole lot. Uh, it equates to about the size of maybe... A nickel or a dime in diameter and again put your liquid this would be more for the liquid put your liquid uh, attractant on there roll it up into a into a, a ball or a pencil point stick it into your tube bait and uh, and again that'll hold that attractant far longer than simply trying to scent it and rubbing it and then and throwing it it makes it makes sense hopefully to you. So one of those funny things a lot of people have asked me in the past when I did bring out my tubes is why do you have a bunch of old earplugs in your in your bait box, <laughs> you know, in your tackle box? And then I had to explain to them. When I do tubes, some hollow body baits, same thing. I will scent this. It holds that attractant a lot longer, makes the, the value of the castability, um, you know, increase. So it just works wonders for me. And again, having a hollow body that tends to tear out easily. People know tube fishermen know you, you're constantly rigging them. They pull out every once in a while. This added amount of, of body inside there, something to run your hook through, just makes it that much more durable over time. So it gives you a twofold benefit. It gives you durability if you're if you're rigging your hook through it to give a little more strength, and it definitely gives you the longevity of making your baits pay for yourself. And you know baits aren't that expensive, but hey. If I can save, you know, two squirts of bait attractant on every fishing trip, um, that might equate at the end of the year to a bottle and a half, two bottles of attractant that I've saved, not had to buy. So I make one bottle last the value of two or three. And uh, again, that's me being frugal and, and being a money-saving son of a gun. Um, that's what I try to do. So I just wanted to give those little quick tips. Um, I will be building a proper tube box back up and running shortly um so i'll probably do a video eventually because i see a lot of other youtubers doing it of what kind of tackle i have i might do a video on all the hard baits that i have um crank baits and and uh lift and lipless um and some rat and the rattle traps that i have and then i might do uh, a video on all the soft baits and the creature baits that i have because i've got plenty i've got three canvas um 
I use I use uh, Gander Mountains canvas bait boxes. I got three of those filled with planos. I got my day bag. Um, I've got other tackle, you know, planos out the yin yang. Um, I got I got a problem. I got way too much tackle. <laughs> two hands, two arms. Can only hold one one rod at a time, and I got way too much tackle. Um, but uh, I might do a little expose on on the baits that I have, the tackle that I have. Uh, give a little bit of how I use them, when I use them. Um, water temperatures are going to start warming up hopefully shortly within mid month of um, of March. We should start seeing the the 50s and the 60s. And once the sun starts coming up early March, mid March, and the day temperatures start getting that 48, 50, 52, uh, and 60 degree days, even though right now it's scheduled for some off days of overshadowed clouds and rain and, and whatnot. Um, once the water starts taking on heat, it doesn't disperse it as quickly as people think. So that pre-spawn is going to kick off really soon, and then the spawn will come in right after that really quickly, I, I would assume. So uh, I'm definitely working towards getting some cast and catching um, videos out there for you. But uh, until the water temperatures come up and the fish start going into their, their early spring feeding, um, it's kind of like, you know, it's, there's still ice out there and snow, and it snowed a couple days ago, and uh, it, the, it's windy as heck and, and chilly. So, unfortunately, right now I'm still inside. Uh, after this, I'm probably going to put out, well, obviously I'm coming up with my next month's uh, Mystery Tackle Box. I hope you tune in for that. But if any of this has been informative and educational, I try to keep these videos as short as possible. I don't want to go over 30 minutes or 40 minutes. I try to keep them, you know, 30 minutes or less. Uh, but, uh, I hope this was a little educational. I hope this gives you a tip. Simple things like an earphone, you know, an, an ear, um, ear protection, uh, earplug, or a piece of cotton just to save on the cost of your scents and to make them work for you long term. It's sort of like a time release capsule. Um, and again, you can, you know, you can take things like the gulp, uh, the little eggs, these king eggs from, from Atlas or the gulp, uh, power baits. You can take these, stick them in the into the worm, into the head of the worm, and then back it up with a piece of cotton wadding, and then rig it. That'll keep that bait from popping out. It'll keep that giving off the scent and the attractant, and then the bass will go after it. It's just an added thing. I mean, anything that helps the bass want to bite is always a good thing, in my opinion. So uh, I hope this has been entertaining and educational of sorts. I know this is something that I've done for years and years and years, uh, like I said, it was a, a trick from my grandfather's era, and it's just, I haven't seen anybody else explain it, so I wanted to at least shed some light on an old, old tried-and-true trick. Um, I hope this has been educational. Like, subscribe, and share. I'm looking forward to my first 500 um, YouTube subscribers. I'm, I think, at 220 now at the, at the moment. So um, I hope that you enjoyed this. I hope that you go out and share this on social media with any of other fishing friends. Um, just put it out there. Anybody who is a actual subscriber, when I get my 500th um, subscriber, will be entered in the contest to win that uh, uh, logo hand-painted Whopper Plopper. Uh, when I get to 1,000, uh, they the, all the 1,000 subscribers at that time will get a chance to be entered in to win a $100 uh, Visa gift card. Uh, so they can spend $100 on whatever they want. And then subsequently, I might do other giveaways, uh, probably in July, I'm going to do a giveaway of sorts, um, just to get some tackler, tackling things out there for people. Uh, that'll be a separate thing. That won't just be on subscribers. It doesn't matter where I am. I'm going to give something away in July because that's my birthday, so, <laughs> my birthday month. So I just want to make sure that I give to other people and, and get more anglers out there. So I hope this has been entertaining. Like, subscribe, share, and uh, push us up for 500 and then 1,000 and beyond. All right? Foul mouth fishing. Thanks for uh, thanks for spending some time with me. Peace.